All right, I think we spent time and we really made an interesting little world here with trees and grass and rocks and also a background. Now let's start to add something to the scene. Let's start to add some objects that are going to move around, okay? So some simple objects that we could add to begin with are just the basic primitive 3D shapes like a cube, a sphere. We're going to add a sphere. And we're going to do a little experiment today. Now I just added a sphere in my hierarchy window, but I don't see it anywhere. And you may be wondering, well, how do I know it's there? Well, just double click on the on the um, sphere game object, double click on it, and it will zoom you into where the object is. Let's zoom out to see a little bit about where this guy is. Oh my god, he's like really, really somewhere that I don't I can't find him. Let me make him a little bit bigger. Over here. I click on sphere in the hierarchy window and in the inspector window there are properties here about its transform. The position is where it is in the world and right now let me just reset its position to the center of the universe, the center of my world. Then double click on it. Aha! Uh -huh, it's right there on the corner of something. What is it on the corner of? Oh my goodness, I think it's on the corner of my terrain. So my terrain was created, and the center of the universe is right there on that tip. And every time I add an object and I say reset, this is the center of my universe. Um, all right, first thing, let me make this ball a little bit bigger. I'm going to say 10, 10, and 10. I'm doing this on the scale. It's still a sphere, but it's just a bigger sphere. Um, and I think I want the center of the universe to stay where it is. What I want to do is I want to move the terrain so that the center of my terrain is the center of the universe as well. So I click on the terrain, and how much do I have to move over the terrain on the, let's see which axis we have to move it on. It looks like we have to move it on the X and the Y. How much do I have to move it over to make it in the middle? Well, let's see what happens if I move it on the X. It's moving over. Um, I'll be moving it over some time to get to the middle. And I could also, come on, computer, catch up. I could also drag and drop on the Z and move it. But let me show you something. This little um, gear icon, this is the settings for the terrain. And when I scroll down, it has the resolution of my terrain, the width and the height. It's 500 units. So if I just go back by 500 units, minus 250 on the X, and then on the Z plane, I go minus 250, that should put my terrain, the center of my, my terrain in the center of the universe. Now let's double click on a sphere. And there's a sphere, kind of like on the flat part of a terrain. Um, I think I'm also going to move my terrain down a little bit so that when I place objects in there, if I had mountains or something like that, that my objects will be up in the sky. So I'm going to move it down by minus 50. Okay. Now let me see where my sphere is in relation to the terrain. All right. So somewhere right there in the middle of the sky is the center of my universe. And the terrain is the middle of the terrain is in the middle of the universe too. All right, I have a sphere. Now I want the sphere to be able to move by itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have it drop out of the sky. So from the hierarchy window, I select sphere. It's already selected here. And I'm going to have to add a component to make this sphere behave like it has some physics or something. So add component, physics, and I'm going to add a rigid body. Now, here's the properties for the rigid body component, and I'm going to have it use gravity, okay? Just by putting that in there, when I press play now, this is the first time we're going to actually press play. We've been working in the scene window. When I press play, it's going to show the game window, which is like playing the game. So here I go. I'm going to press play. My screen changes color to denote that it's not in bug mode and the ball went down but I kind of can't see where it went and press stop let me introduce you to the camera double click on the well click on the camera 
And here you can see in the scene the lines that are showing where the camera is. And then it shows this little preview of what the camera could see. What we're going to do is we want to position the camera to see the same thing we're seeing when, when I'm looking at the scene here. So I select camera, I go to game object, align with view. And now you can see that the camera preview, camera is seeing the same point of view that I'm seeing. So anytime I want to move around, take a different view of something, like zoom out, if I want the camera to actually, you know, match up, an easy way to do it is first position the scene the way I want to, and then select the camera, and then say game object, align with view. And boom, the camera will set that view. Now if I press play, we'll get a little bit better picture of the ball falling down. It takes a while to start up. Okay, it's starting and you can see the ball's falling and it kind of hits there and lands in the trees. I wonder what happens if I had the ball fall over some of these rocks that I've made. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to click the sphere and I could use this move tool in my scene and now I could move along. Oops, let me do that again. Computer is like kind of choppy, I think, because I can move along the x axis, the red line, or the blue line. Or I could click this um, square over here and just freely move along the, those two axes and just put it above the rocks. Is that above the rocks? I think it is. All right. Uh -huh. Let me just realign my view here. See what happens when it lands, when the ball drops over those rocks. Oh, I realign my view. I better point my camera there. Game object, alignment view, press play. And let's see what happens now with the ball. And it goes to the game window, and the ball drops. Um, as you can see, it's hitting the rocks and rolling along them. There was like a lot of things happening here, and I didn't write any code. What happens if I add a box instead of a ball? Let's see, I'm going to go back to the hierarchy window, right click, and now I'm going to add a new shape, a 3D object, I'm going to add a cube. Okay, and there's a cube there. And just like the way I made the sphere bigger, let me make the box bigger, 10. I'm just picking 10, you could pick 5, you could pick 20, just don't pick a million, okay, because then it's probably going to be bigger than the world. The world is 500. So there's my box, my cube, and let's move the cube over to the mountains. I'm looking straight down. I picked this movement thing, and then I'm going to uh, click on there and drag it over to the rocks here to let's respond, put it right here. Oh, 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 not too far. Move back a little bit. There. Now let me see how that looks from this point of view here. Okay, let me see. Like this. Zoom in a little. Alright, now let me put the um make sure the camera is looking the same way I am. Game object line of view. And now let me press play. Oh, I forgot something. I have to add the rigid body. Right? So Go back and select my cube in the hierarchy window, add component, physics, rigid body, great. Okay, and the gravity's turned on. Here we go. Let's press play and see what, what happens when the box falls compared to what happens when the ball falls. They're both falling at the same speed. Oop, box is tumbling, ball is rolling. All right, wow, look at that. So the physics engine, it even knows what the shape is. The box got stuck and the ball keeps rolling. Hey, that's the end of that experiment. That's cool. Just a cool. Mm -hmm.